check it out. I'm extremely excited for today's English reading class because I have a brand new book and it's from an Irish author and illustrator. His name is Jerry Daly and I love this book already. It's called Finn's First Song, A Whaley Big Adventure. Now, just like the last book that we read, remember it was called Run Wild by David Covell. This one also has a theme of nature. This one takes place in the ocean. Now today, I'm not just going to be reading aloud to you. I want you to join in and read along as well, okay? And this book is perfect for us to read along together. Now, I love this story because there are so many really fun sounds to be heard in the story. So it's not just all contained here on the pages, it fills the space around us when we read it. Because for the loud bits, we're going to read out loud. And for the quiet bits, remember we're all reading along together, we're going to read nice and quiet. So with these changes of loud and quiet, we're going to be putting lots of expression into all of our reading. And remember another thing as well when we're reading, it's really important to understand. So I have a really fun activity too, okay? Now, many of the pages we read contain wonderful sounds, like I said. So on each page, after we read, I want you to make the sounds that you can read, okay? Now, time to begin. But as always, like with every reading class, let's do some predicting. So just have a look at the cover there and tell me, what do you think that this book is about? Who do you think is the main character? What do you think is going to happen? And what does this title, Finn's First Son, what does this title tell you about what will happen? Okay, good predicting, well done. Now, time to get started. Finn's First Son, A Whaley Big Adventure by Jerry Daly. Here we go. <clears throat> Far away, on the glistening ocean, an amazing journey began. Finn was swimming all the way to the Irish coast with his mum. Will Dad be there? asked Finn. Oh yes, said mum, and lots of tasty food too. Finn loved to hear his dad's magical songs rumble and roll across the huge ocean. Squeak! Thwap! Thwap! Whoop! 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 Boop! Boop! Dad could make Faraway feel very near. So, let's have a look at our sound words. Rumble and roll. Let's make these sounds together again. Squeak, thwap, thwap, whoop, 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 thwap, thwap. This book is bringing us underneath the ocean. Isn't that amazing? Underneath the ocean surface, I should say. Now, on their journey, Finn loved to jump into the air, to splash the biggest splash, to blow up to the sky and hide. Well, sort of. So the sounds that we can hear on this one, hear. Splash. Make a splash sound. Now make a blow sound, like a whale breaching the surface. Blow up to the sky. Each night, beneath the whoosh of the waves, Finn drifted off to sleep, listening to his dad's distant song. My mom and dad are the biggest in the world, he whispered. But sometimes, there were much bigger things. Mm. 
Beep. Vroom. Chug, chug, chug. Bam. Boom. Boom. Finn hid under his mum's flipper as she tried to guide him away. The ships were so loud, Finn was afraid. He looked all around. But he couldn't see his mum anywhere. He was all alone. Oh, I don't like this, he thought. Then Finn saw some other sea creatures. Maybe they could help. Are we all reading along together? Here we go, nice and slow. Hello, everyone. I am lost, said Finn. I can't find my mum or hear my dad. What should I do? Can you send a message? Asked a clever octopus as she wriggled her curly tentacles. I don't know, Finn sniffed. Watch us, she said. We all have different ways. Different ways to send a message. I can squirt ink to send a message, said the octopus. So he shook and he shook. But no matter how much, Finn just could not squirt ink. Next, an electric ray said, I can make electricity. Finn wibbled and wobbled, but it would not work. Instead, he made a surprise little sound. Squeak! Squeak! We change our color, said the squids. We can be red, then orange, then blue. Can you? Finn tried to change color using yellow sponges and some kelp. This is no good either, he moaned. How can I send a message? We twinkle our lights, said lots of crystal jellyfish. He pushed and he wriggled. He squeezed his eyes tight. He flapped his flippers. He waggled his tail, but Finn had no lights. Instead, he made another funny sound. Thwop! Thwop! We can click, said the seahorses. We like to whistle, said a pod of dolphins. Finn listened patiently. They were all amazed when he made a very different sound. Whoop, whoop. We make ourselves bigger, said the pufferfish. Well, Finn could easily look absolutely huge. Now he made another sound, which he really liked. Come on, everyone. Boop. At last, Finn knew what he could do. He started to sing his first whale song. Squeak! Thwop! Thwop! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Boop, boop. Wow, that's really great, said all the other sea creatures. Wow, look, I can see musical notes. Isn't that beautiful? He's singing. Finn sang for as long and as loud as he could. His song went far, far across the ocean. Everybody join in. Squeak, thwop, thwop, whoop, 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 boop, boop, boop. Then something very big was very close. What do you think it was? It was Mum. I heard you, Finn, she cheered. You're a great singer. 
Stay beside me now, we're nearly there. Nearly where? Oh, they're swimming to the west coast of Ireland, aren't they? A happy whale loves to splash. And Finn made the biggest splash ever. He thanked these new friends for all their help. Okay, make the biggest splash ever. Off you go. Splash. For another day and night, they swam together side by side. Close to mum, Finn wasn't afraid anymore. He liked to sing his song. Squeak, thwop, thwop. Soon dad could hear him too. And dad always sang back. At last they arrived at the coast of Ireland, where they filled their massive mouths with tons of tiny fish. And there was Dad. They sang the biggest whale song together. Squeak, whoop, whoop, thwop, thwop. And their whale song carried far, far across the huge ocean. Are you singing along with Finn and his dad? Let's hear you. And that's the end of the story. That is the story of Finn's first song. Let's play a quick game. So what I have here is a dice. And of course, a dice is one to six. And each number is linked to a question up here. Have a look. Yep. So let's just roll and we can make up any questions that we want to. It's just to see how well we understood our story. Okay, here we go. Number one. Okay, so that's number one. Up here is number one. Why? Okay. Why was Finn making this huge, big, long journey across the ocean? He was trying to meet his dad, wasn't he? Oh, and get lots of food as well. And to visit Ireland. Now, here we go. Ooh, number five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what question is that? What? What did Finn learn from the other sea creatures? Well, off you go. What did he learn? He learned how to send a message. He learned how to sing, didn't he? Yeah, he learned from all those other sea creatures. Okay, one last roll. Number one again. Okay, so why, why was he so happy to see his dad off the west coast of Ireland. I'd say it's because he hadn't seen him in ages and they were gonna eat lots of fish and they were gonna sing together. Okay, brilliant reading and great comprehension game as well. You can play that yourself at home. Now, so what did we learn today? Well, we read the story of Finn's first song. We read it together and we made the sounds that we heard underneath the ocean. And we had so much fun with sound, with songs like rumble and roll and click and whistle. And it made the story sing to us. Yeah, Finn really sang to us. And we played a game that allowed us to investigate how well we understood our reading today. Mashiv. And thank you, Jerry Daly. Great work. And yeah, fantastic stuff, everybody. And I'm going to be making whale sounds all day, I'd say. Squeak, thwop, thwop. Hey. I think I learned how to sing as well. Mashiv. See you next time. Slan. What's the story? That's one of my favorite questions. Uh, and it's what we're going to be talking about today for our English creative writing lesson. Yeah. What's the story? Hey, Munto, Ray. What's the story? Kids from Dublin say that to me. And when you think about it, there are stories everywhere. If I asked you what your favorite color was or what your favorite sport was, I'm sure there's a story behind all those things. So stories are everywhere and are constantly springing into existence. Yep, that's right. So what type of stories can we have? Let's see for our creative writing. Well, we could tell a real story that really happened. That's a factual story. Or we could make up a story. 
That's a fictional story. Yeah, all right. And today, as part of our English creative writing lesson, we are going to find out a way to plan and prepare for fantastic creative writing. Let's get started. Okay, if we have a look at the board here, we see it's a graphic organizer. Now, what is a graphic organizer? Well, a graphic organizer is a way of visually planning what we're going to write when we get busy with our creative writing. So, when I look at my graphic organizer, I can very easily see under some headings what I'm going to write about. Okay, let's go through the headings. Oh, wait a second. I think the best way to go through this graphic organizer is to use an example. So, I'm going to use the example of a story that we all know, The Three Little Pigs. Are we ready? Let's go. So look at that first heading. The setting. What is the setting for The Three Little Pigs? Hmm. Well, first of all, I think it's a fictional story because there's talking pigs. So, did it happen here in Ireland? Hmm. Maybe a magical version of Ireland. Hmm, yeah. Maybe fairy tale land? I don't know if there's a right and wrong answer to that. So, we're not exactly sure where the setting is. It's just a kind of magical fairy land where pigs build houses. Nice. That sounds like a pretty good setting. Now, the characters. Okay, the characters in Three Little Pigs. So, there are three pigs. Yeah, there's w one is kind of lazier than the other, isn't it? Yeah, that's the pig that built his house from straw. There's the pig who built his house from sticks. And then there's the really clever one, the really diligent one. And that pig built his house from bricks. There's another really important character in the Three Little Pigs, the Big Bad Wolf. Now, let's have a think about that character. That character is very different to all the others. He's got a name, the Big Bad Wolf. That tells you a lot about him. But if we think about the character, hmm, when I think of that character, I think of his face. Hmm. I think of his voice, I think he has a deep voice. And what does that character do? He huffs and he puffs. So there's an awful lot of information about that character in the story of the three little pigs. Next up in our graphic organizer, the problem. Hmm, I think one of the characters is the problem because the big bad wolf is chasing after the three little pigs. And the three little pigs have to get away. Mm, that is a problem. Okay, what happens? The problem is solved. And the three pigs are happy in the house of bricks. Now, looking at those headings on our graphic organizer, let's pause for a second and think about our own favorite stories. What's your favorite book? Well, when I was your age, my favorite book was Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl is an, an amazing author. I'm sure you guys love him as well. And think of Fantastic Mr. Fox. That setting where the story took place. It took place in the wood, didn't it? And right at the edge of the wood were the farms. And then so much of the story took place underground. How that setting came to life. And the characters. Roald Dahl's characters are always amazing. Think of those three farmers. Beans, Boggus, and Bunce. <laughs> they were brilliant. They still make me laugh. And then the characters, they all worked together on one side. And there were characters that were part of the problem. And there were characters that were part of the solution. I recommend anybody to read that book, Fantastic Mr. Fox. So have a look around at home and pick up the book and do a little investigation. What's the setting of that book? 
Where did it take place? Who are the characters involved? Read closely and find out as much as you possibly can. What's the problem? What's the drama of the story? And how is that problem solved? Remember, by doing lots of reading, it'll make you a much better writer. Actually, you know, I'm such a Roald Dahl fan that I brought one or two of his books with me today. You want to see them? <laughs> there we go. Down the street. Can't walk. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's so many. I absolutely love them. Now, let's have a look. There's so many. Where's that fantastic Mr. Fox that I was talking about? No, that's George's Marvelous Medicine with SEO Trot. No, that's not the one either. But, oh, yeah, it's Fantastic Mr. Fox. I found him. Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl and illustrated by Quentin Blake. <laughs> and look at the back. We've got Fantastic Mr. Fox. We've got Beans, Bunts, and Bogus. <laughs> oh, there's so many. I'd love to read them all to you. Look at this one. This one is the enormous crocodile. Oh. The giraffe, the pelly, and me. Oh, I gotta tidy these up. Gotta get back to my creative writing class. Let's just tidy these up. Okay, and back to work. Okay, enough time for Roald Dahl later. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, my graphic organizer. <laughs> So now it's time for me to make up my own story using my graphic organizer. And then afterwards, you're going to write a story of your own. Now, before we start, it's always good to have a think about the person who's going to read my story. Hmm. Do you want the reader of the story to laugh out loud? <laughs> Do you want the reader of the story to be scared? Do you want the reader up to story to say, ah, and really know how the writer feels? It's always good to think about the person who will read the story. Okay, I am going to want the reader to enjoy the story. I want the reader to feel good. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, now. Now, with the graphic organizer, I don't need to do it in order because I've got a great idea for a character. So I'm going to start there. I think the character should be a teacher. Yeah, a teacher. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just going to write it in here. Yeah, now you can draw a picture. You can do anything in here. Remember, this is just your graphic organizer before you get writing. Now, the reason I picked a teacher is because very often, the teachers are the bad guys in stories, but in my story, the teacher is going to be the good guy. Okay, okay, so it's teacher. Now you can write any amount of stuff in there. What's next? Oh, the setting. Remember, the setting is where the story takes place. Hmm. A teacher, what a teacher teaches in a school. So it's going to be almost real life. Oh, but wait a second, we don't go to school these days, the schools are closed. It's going to be also at the teacher's home. So it's going to start at the school and then the teacher stays at home. Lovely. Hmm. Now, what's the problem? This is a really important part for the drama of the story. The teacher must have a problem. How about a problem that's here these days, the coronavirus. That's what I'm going to write about. Coronavirus. Okay. Now, and the problem solved. Hey, we're solving the problem all the time by washing our hands and staying at home and watching the homeschool hub. Yes. Mm -hmm. Home school. Now, I've planned out my story, I know the character, it's a teacher, and I'm going to call him 
Muntor Evan. Yes. And I have a setting. It's going to take place in the school and in the teacher's home. The problem is the coronavirus. And the problem solved is the homeschool hub. Gracious readers, are you ready to hear my story? Well, let's go. Always nice to get comfortable first. <clears throat> this story is called No School Today, and the author is Muntor Ray. There once was a friendly third class teacher named Muntor Evan. He was always having fun. The only thing that he loved more than teaching was soccer. His favorite player was Ireland captain and Everton fullback Seamus Coleman. Oh, Coley, Coley, he used to sing. The kids would join in. One day, Muntor Evan cycled to the lovely colorful school where he worked. He always found that cycling to school really set him up for a great day of teaching. But this day was different. I think the problem is going to be coming in here now. There were no kids around and there were no teachers. All was quiet. The school was abandoned. We're getting into a problem now. Muntor Evan checked his phone where he read a message. Dear teachers, the message read, school has been closed down for a few weeks in order to give all the doctors and nurses the best chance to stop the coronavirus. Right, said Muntor Evan, better get myself home. That's what Ireland captain Seamus Coleman would do. Muntor Evan was really pleased to do his bit to help stop the coronavirus. He stayed at home, didn't go to school, didn't even go soccer training. After a few weeks, Muntor Evan became a little bit lonely. Oh, this is the problem bit. He really missed teaching and he really missed the third class children. He knew that there were lots and lots of kids who really missed their teachers too. Then Muntor Evan saw an ad for the homeschool hub on RTE. He could learn and see how other teachers teach. Best of all, he could look at pictures sent in by kids all over the country. He could watch videos uploaded by everyone working and learning together. Muntor Evan could stay at home and help stop the coronavirus while at the same time staying connected with all the primary school children in Ireland. Ireland Captain Seamus Coleman would be proud, thought Muntor Evan. Now I better do what Muntor Ray says. Hey, good work. Shout outs to Muntor Evan. And that's my story. So it was set in school and set at the home of Muntor Evan. The characters, a great character if I do say so myself. The problem was the coronavirus and the problem was solved by relaxing at home and working hard for the homeschool hub. I'm really excited to share another book with you. This is a beautiful book by an Irish author and illustrator named Jennifer Farley. And it's called Scout's Best Day Ever, A Doggy Adventure Around Ireland. Okay, as you can see, I have covered up some words. So as we're reading along, we're going to fill in the blanks. Well, you are going to fill in the blanks, okay? And this is a great way for us to show our understanding of our reading, okay? Oh, and as well as that, we can see that there's two bits of writing. There's a postcard up here on each page, and then there's down here, there's a summary, okay? So the postcard up here and a line down here that summarizes what is happening. And summarizing is a lovely way for us to check on how well we are understanding our story. Okay, and as you can see, I've also got a map of Ireland up here for Scout's doggy adventure all around Ireland. And look, I've made my own little Scout. So, yeah, sorry, Jennifer, it doesn't, doesn't look exactly like Scout that you've drawn. 
But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my scout onto the map and as he travels around, we'll uh, follow him around as well, okay? And when we do this, this is called charting. So we'll be able to chart the procedure, chart the progress of Scout as he goes around Ireland. We'll be able to follow him, okay? And I think it's also really funny to be able to watch him as he roams all the way around as well. Okay, so let's read. Here we go. Scout's best day ever, a doggy adventure around Ireland by Jennifer Farley. Here we go. This is Scout. This is Cat. Scout loves Cat. Cat loves ignoring Scout. Scout, Daisy and Dad are going on a holiday around Ireland. Cat is staying at home with Gren. I'll miss you, Cat. I'll send a postcard every day. Oh, and we got a little summary down here. Happy something dog. What do you think it is? I'll give you a clue. It's where they're going. It's not Happy Ireland, dog. Happy, starts with a H. Happy Holiday, dog. Okay, here we go. Oh, our first postcard. It says, Cork City. Hey, cat, first day of the holiday and we are in the big city. There are some pretty fancy dogs here. I'm fitting right in. We met some buskers and I sang the songs of my people. Best day ever, your pal, Scout. Howling in the street dogs. Oh, and look, posh shop shopping dogs. Now time to get our Scout on his adventure as well. So where is he? He's in Cork City. There we go. There's Scout down in Cork. Lovely stuff. Where is he going next? Ooh, have a look at this one. This postcard is from Tomond Park in Limerick. Dearest Cat, today we cheered on the team. Dad shouted at the ref and Daisy giggled. I ran on the pitch and Dad shouted at me. I don't mind though, because I got a new toy. Best day ever, your buddy, Scout. P.S. I think the team want me to join them. Down here it says fetching the ball dog. Oh we must do some predicting in here. What do you think is the missing word? Crazy pitch something dog. What's he doing? I really love this word. It's a crazy pitch invading dog. Crazy pitch invading dog. All right. Oh, we got to move our scout onto Limerick. Up he goes north. Good day, Carl and me. Ah, there he goes. In Toman Park, the home of Munster Rugby. Oh, scout is off to an amazing adventure. Now, where's he going? This postcard is from Kilkenny. Dearest cat, we went to the castle this morning. Then we had sausages for breakfast. Best day ever. Delicious. Dad seemed a bit tense. Your buddy, Scout. Over here, sniffing at the butcher's dog. Oh, and a missing word on this side. Running through the something dog. What do you think it is? Running through the, where's he running? Running through the, He's running through the market. Dog. Now, another postcard from County Wicklow. Oh, what's it? Wait a second. Let's fix this. Scout went to Kilkenny. County Kilkenny. And now he's gone on to County Wicklow. County Kilvanton. Ah, he's heading up the East Coast. So, our postcard from Wicklow, from Scout. County Wicklow. Hi, Cat. Today we climbed the Sugarloaf. I couldn't find any sugar, 
but the smells from the top were amazing. I didn't realise how high the mountain was and I felt a little dizzy. Today was my first time in a helicopter. Best day ever! Scout. Hiking up the hill, dog. Brave mountain rescue dog. <laughs> so, there's Scout. Now, are you getting an idea of what kind of character Scout is? Now, where are we? County Fair in the Midlands. Okay. So let's pop Scout into the Midlands. We'll put him here in County Offaly. Dear Cat, Today I hung out with the sheepdogs. Did you know that more than one sheep are called sheep and not sheeps? Daisy put me in a competition called Who is a Good Boy? Guess who won? Later, to celebrate, I rolled in something really smelly. It was heaven. Without a doubt, the best day ever. Your favourite good boy, Scout. Bringing home the sheep dogs, putting on a show dogs. Now, archaeological dig dog up in County Meath. Lock Crew Meath. Dear Cat, we went back in time. Daisy said this tomb is older than the pyramids. There are drawings on the walls. I found a bone, but Dad made me put it back. Apart from that, it was the best day ever. Your best bud, Scout. Ancient tomb art, dog. Look at Scout looking at the art. Now, Dublin. I'll just fix him up now on the map. So he went from the Midlands up to County Nami and then back down to Dublin. A postcard from Trinity College. Hi Cat, we visited the Book of Kells today. There are loads of pictures of dogs in it. Dad said they are illuminated. I found out that I can study to be a dog tour here too. Whoa, best day ever. Scout, future dog tour. P.S. I will perform an operation on you when I get back. Clever clogs college dogs helping across the road dog. Ooh, giant Celtic hound dog from Giant's Causeway in County Antrim. Oh, let's pop him all the way up there. From Dublin, all the way up here to County Antrim, to the Giant's Causeway. Dear Cat, somebody said something about a giant around here, but I've seen nothing. He wouldn't scare me anyway. Best day ever, Scout the Great. Skipping across the rocks, dog. Ooh. Waiting for the boats, dog. In a show on County Donegal. Hi, cat. Hung out on the coast today. Caught a fish and some crab for tea. Best day ever. You would have loved it. Your best boy pal, Scout. Fisherman's best friend dog. Oh, there he is. Stalactite sniffing dog. He's got his snout up in the air. Here's the postcard from Marble Arch Caves in Fermanagh. Hello, cat. We went deep underground. It was very dark. I think Dad was scared, so I sat in his lap. Best day ever. Your buddy, Scout. Did you know a stalactite hangs down and a stalagmite points up? Fearless fossil finding dog. Hey, we found a fossil, didn't we? Let's fix him up. So he went across the north coast 
to the Inishowen Peninsula, and then he went down here to Marble Arch Caves in County Fermanagh. What an adventure for Scout. Salt Hill, Galway. Hi, Cat. Today I dug some very deep holes. Daisy built a castle. We went swimming in the Atlantic Ocean. I dried myself in some really stinky seaweed. It was heaven. Definitely the best day ever. Home soon. I've missed you. I bet you've missed me too. Friends forever, Scout. Swimming in the sea, dog. Oh, and jumping off the something, dog. Can you fill in the blank? Jumping off the... I think this is it here. Jumping off the pier. Maybe some of you out there have jumped off the pier in Salt Hill. I certainly have. Beautiful stuff. Jumping off the pier, dog. I love the colours in that page. Oh, and he's back home. So he went down here and he finished up his holiday in Salt Hill, just outside Galway City. Beautiful. Ah, look, he's delighted to be home. Did you miss me, Cat? Nope. D did you miss me a tiny bit? No. Did you miss me a teeny tiny bit? Okay, maybe a teeny tiny bit. Best day ever! And that's the end. So, what have we learned today? Well, we read the story of Scout's best day ever by Jennifer Farley. And we read lots of postcards written by Scout. We learned about summarizing. And summarizing is, as we read a story, it's very handy to check on how well we are understanding it. Yeah? And we kept up with Scout's adventure by following him on our map. It was another way for us to chart the procedure and to make sure we were understanding our reading. Mashiv. Yeah. And hey, if you want to draw a picture of Scout, maybe you draw a better picture than I did. Why don't you draw a map of Ireland as well? Or maybe another place he could visit. Yeah? Maybe a place you could recommend to go, for Scout to go on his next holidays. Okay. Mashiv. See you next time. Slán. Bum, 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 bum.